Hi, welcome back to the Lee Kempner house. I've been showing you around this house for the last year and a half since I bought it. And I thought I had taken you just about everywhere. A couple weeks ago, we went up into what I thought was the last frontier and that's the attic above the third floor. But today my new crew and I, I called them me, myself and I, were up here cleaning the third floor bathroom out. And I realized there's another spot through this door that we haven't really explored in detail. We've passed through there a time or two doing other work, but I'm going to stop cleaning for a second and take you inside and show you that area and why it's such a neat feature to this house and so important to this. Before I go in there, I thought I'd better come back downstairs and show you what's right below the space that I'm about to go into. I'm standing at the top of the stairs looking down into the grand staircase and up to this vaulted area above where plywood now replaces what used to be fabulous stained glass lay lights. And now that I'm thinking about it, I need a screwdriver to really show you what's going on up there. So I'm going to go downstairs and grab that and then we'll head into the door. It's a bit of a tight squeeze getting in here because of these bars. We'll talk about them once I'm inside. We'll get my light. It's dark in there. So I squeezed through those little iron bars and I'm now standing in the cupola of the house. And we've seen it from the outside when we were doing the roof. Let me show you another picture here. Just kind of refresh. And now I'm actually inside of it. So you can see how it was constructed. The reason I say this is an important part of the design of the house is Remember, we've talked before a lot about the horrible climate down here. It's hot, it's humid. It can be 100 degrees and 98% humidity. It's sweltering. I mean, it's just miserable. And without this, I don't know how anybody could have lived in this house. We talked about all the large windows on the first floor that open up so you can walk through. There are transoms in all the bedrooms, between the bedrooms, going into the hall actually from the halls into the attic spaces. The bedrooms are connected to each other. Everything was designed so that air could flow in and up that grand open staircase to the area I just showed you and up through this cupola and exit out of the house. That motion of the hot air rising and the cooler air being drawn in from below would have created a little bit of a breeze and kept this house from just being unbearable. Let me show you a little bit of the cupola design. It has these big galvanized vents and they're covered with wire to keep bugs out. And then the top is glass to let in light. And then there's another vent right on top. And the reason they wanted light in this area is because directly below is where we took out those stained glass lay lights so that glass cupola would let light come in during the day to show off those lay lights. Now at night, they don't do any good, but somebody did come in at some point and add a single can light to try to shine on them. When we restore those, we'll do a much better job of lighting up here so at night we can really show off those lay lights. I'm not going to pay that much money to get them fixed and have you not be able to see them. One of the main roof supports coming up. And hanging from it are those two iron bars that we talked about in the attic mess video that actually support that second floor stair landing area. And for those of you who didn't see it in an earlier video, I had an iron worker come in and he just went crazy over these because they're hand forged, these eyes on top. So these are probably very old. And then to keep them tight, they have this iron buckle, I call it. 
where you can screw and draw the rods in together to keep tension on them. This one doesn't have a lot of tension, so it's actually not doing anything. This one, I can't even budge. So there's a lot of weight on this. Well, I don't know if you can hear it, but it is very windy up here. Now there are condition issues up here. You can see a lot of water staining as you would expect, especially with hurricanes and everything else, water gets blown in. There's a lot of water staining around the top. Although that looks like original wood to me, so I don't think it's been replaced. There's a lot more staining here on the side, and you can see they put a lot of holes in it to bring in air conditioning lines over time. But I've been up here when it's raining, and it feels dry to the touch to me, so I don't think there's any active leaks going on, but it's something that has to be continuously monitored. And here, just a quick, quick peek. That's that area that was such a mess. If you haven't seen the attic mess videos, go check that out. But let me show you the biggest problem up here. And to do that, I'm going to have to climb through this rail. Oops. There's an old piece of slate off the roof. I don't know how to get in there. I'm going to go over it. <laughs> Need to be just uh, a little bit taller. Oh my gosh. I don't want to step in the middle of that plywood. But look here. You see that? That is termite. And I'm being careful. That's why I brought my screwdriver. Didn't see anybody live come out. So I'm hoping that that is old damage. If you look, you can see down in here, signs down in there. So they've made it all the way from the ground up here to the cupola, which is not good. And get off this plywood and back over to the safe side. I do have it screwed down so that it doesn't accidentally shift or tip. But I don't want to stand on it. It's there to prevent... Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I've got one leg that bends and one leg that doesn't. Okay. It's going to be... Okay, I made it. Okay, let me take my screwdriver down to this area and show you some other concerns. So we've got some issues with the wood splitting. Well, that doesn't seem to be anything too structural. But as I move down, And see, my little friends have been here. And I brought the screwdriver to show you that there's not much left. This is solid, this is solid. This whole center section is toast. And that's a really important structural member because it's taking the weight of this valley, which we talked about valleys in that attic mess video. And it's carrying that weight or load all the way up through here, through that upper attic that we went into, to the peak of the roof. So this is going to be a problem.
if that needs to be replaced. I've been up here into the roof here. Whoops, yeah, that's not good. Ow. Here. Now I have been up in that third floor attic and looked at this corner with a powerful flashlight a lot. And I haven't seen them go much higher. Here's another one of those steel rods. And you can imagine if this beam fails, it's not gonna be holding this up, which is supporting that stair landing. So this is kind of a critical big deal. Now the good news is I'm not seeing anybody running around. I did treat up here about a year ago very extensively. And I do have to come check all the time if I find anybody still active. But the good news is so far I have not. That little mess right there is just where I crawled over with my screwdriver and scraped out some of the rotted roofing deck. But from this side, you get a good view of the back of the plaster and the keys that we've talked about before that hold the plaster on. These are loose, not attached. These are pretty attached. Oh, and all the plasters and no, oh, that one's loose. The plaster's in decent shape. Here's some of the old knob and tube wiring. You can see it was held on by a ceramic insulator. And then there's a ceramic insulator that they drilled a hole and put through the stud to keep that wire from touching the wood. So that wiring runs all through this house. We're not going to use any of it. None of it will be active. This is a fascinating feature to me. I'm going to start by going back downstairs and showing you that vaulted area. And then we're going to come back up here because they go hand in hand together. Okay, I needed to come back down in this vaulted area to show you specifically these little square designs just under where the stained glass would lay. If you look close, I don't know if the light's gonna allow you to see it, but they're closed off, they're just decorative. But if we move around and look at the other side, those holes aren't decorative, they're actually holes. Now you saw that vaulted area with those square decorative designs on one side, but on the other side, they're actual openings. Well, they open right below this board right here. And this board is actually hinged, oops, covered up. It's actually a hinged door with handles and it opens up. Well, it's gonna get stuck on my plywood, but it opens all the way up so that air can flow freely through those little square openings up here under the cupola and exit out. Because remember, when the lay lights are here, this is relatively sealed up. In the winter, the door stays closed to hold in the hot air because they don't want the hot air escaping the building. They want to keep the building warm. And those little door handles actually match handles in the butler's pantry. A pretty ingenious. Even this little attic space has its own transom, which I think is, well, I guess that's really for the hall for air.
to escape out the cupola. It's open to that big attic above. So there you have it. One more little space that we hadn't visited in detail before. I've got to step out. I have a guest coming to take a tour of the house. A new friend I met on the internet. I'll give you one last look. That wraps it up for the cupola. It's an interesting, interesting space, and it has so much to do with the functionality of the heating and cooling of this house. I can't imagine living here in the summer without air conditioning, but just think about what it would be like here with it 100 degrees and 98% humidity if you didn't have something like this built into the house to create that natural rising of the heat and getting it exited from the house through this cupola and drawing in cooler air and setting up some kind of a breeze. There would be no way to live in this house in the summer. I've been here and I've been working um, with the house all boarded up and shut up and none of that cool air coming in. And I can tell you it is miserable and horribly hot. There's a lot still to do in this house. You can see the condition here is a nightmare. There's work to be done here, but there's work to be done everywhere. So turn on your notifications, subscribe, and don't miss a single episode as we restore this amazing house back to its original beauty. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here at the Lee Kempner House in Galveston, Texas.